You ready? Hi. You ready for your spa? I think so. Okay, first time, first time for me. Ooh, I'm a little nervous. What? Oh, give him space! Give him space! No, 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 not me! Not me! Does that mean? Oh my god. So, how do you feel? Is it toxic if I say I liked it? This is the card, this is the track, and this is the only thing that I need in my spank bank. Welcome back to Spa, my little unky clunkies. Um, Jeff Saville is behind us. We are starting P12 as car number 14 with a 220.4. Just a few cars ahead of us. These guys are going to start blocking each other for position into turn one. Jeff Saville is going to pass us on the inside. We've got car, uh, a couple of cars behind us, and as we go super deep into turn one, you'll see the Alpine car and actually car number 18 as well are going to slip through. So we're going to move all of the way down to P15 on the run up to the first corner. So from P12 to P15. Not fantastic, but at least we're not side by side with anybody here. It looks like everybody is moving in a straight line up Eau Rouge for the first time. We do have to lift pretty massively there as we totally botch our line, which is going to allow another Alpine car through, and also this car that doesn't seem to have a number in front of us. So down two more positions, that's down to P17. Looking to go around the outside of the Alpine car, I mean the hopes are slim here. Going super deep to allow him space and somebody runs into the back of us, sending us off the track. This guy sends it from absolutely downtown, completely misses the first apex and though there was net code, I mean we were going to die from that any way you put it. Car number 21 spinning out, blocking car number 22, so he gets put off. As we rejoin the track, we're going to move up from P24 to P23 as we pick up the position of the guy who just got sent off of the track. And uh, chasing down Owen, Owen Ills Isley is the guy ahead of us. Um, really cool guy. We had a nice conversation before the race. He watches the YouTube video, so shout, shout out to you, Owen. And um, we're going to try and chase him down here, try and break into the sub-20 positions. Piece or car number 17 up ahead goes very deep. This is Jonas Sager, I believe. He's a Twitch streamer. Check him out at, um, I think it's, it's on the back of his car right there. Feel free to go check out his Twitch. That is going to put us right on his tail as we start lap two. So fortunately, even though we did uh, have a bit of an accident at the end of the Kimmel straight, we are still attached to the group, which is fantastic. Riding in P23, opportunity to move up, which is always good. And to speak of the devil, as we come around turn one, there is somebody who seems to have had some trouble getting around turn one. They are going to pull directly in front of us as we're going full speed into Eau Rouge. We managed to get around them before entering Eau Rouge, so a bit of an aggressive rejoin from them, but I mean, maybe not. It felt aggressive to me, but I don't know. Maybe that's normal. We uh, are successfully up into P22 now. We did lose a little bit of time to the car ahead, making that maneuver to uh, safely get up Eau Rouge, but still attached to them, still have slipstream, and it looks like there is some fighting up ahead. There's a couple of cars heading... They're pretty close to each other heading into this little downhill right-hander and you'll see just how much time we're able to pull out as I feel very comfortable through the sector. We're actually going to pick up another position there as well. Uh, just moments earlier, the car who ran into me, I don't think he meant to do that. I mean, the guy ahead of him did drift wide, a hole opened up. Uh, here's a better view. You can all kind of be the judges of this. It was definitely an optimistic move. Call that the vortex of danger. Either way, it's going to put him off, this, off uh, to the side, which moves me up into P21, so I can't complain about that. And eyes ahead as we move through the rest of this lap, it does seem like there is a big group starting to form ahead of us, probably like seven or eight cars um, within, I'd say, three or four maybe like five seconds ahead of us. So there's a lot of opportunity, actually, a lot more than I thought. And this is uh, the benefit of if you do get into an accident, it's better to get into one earlier in the race, I believe, because you're able to uh, kind of remanage your tires throughout the race and you're able to also, um, you just have more time to work your way back through the group. So although we did get into an unfortunate accident, it was fortunate that it was at least that early on into the race. And looking ahead, car number 19, a few cars ahead of us and the car ahead of him, both going to lock up their brakes, run into each other, spin each other out. So that will move us up into P19 as we claim both of those positions. Eyes ahead, heading up into Eau Rouge and Radion. And the two cars ahead are uh, have a very small gap between themselves. So more than likely, there's going to be some sort of battle and more than likely that will allow me to catch up. On top of that, it seems like somebody else has spun across the track. It's one of the Alpine cars from the beginning of this race who just lost the car completely getting out of Radion into the wall. And that is more than likely his race done. 
following the slipstream of these guys as they are both, or the uh, car at the front is taking a defensive line, the car behind moving to the outside at the last second, uh, but Owen, that is, two cars ahead of us, does well to take a semi-defensive line kind of through the braking zone there. He moves back over to the left once he realizes the car behind has moved all of the way to the left, so good racing, and sure enough, we are now right on their tail as expected, which is fantastic, up into P18 at the moment. And uh, there's cons and pros to having cars fight ahead of you. Number, I mean, the pros are that they come back to you, right? So now I'm in the fight, but the cons are the cars ahead of them begin to pull away. And it's very hard to, or it's not very hard, but it is much more difficult to catch a car without slipstream or without somebody to work with you on spa, as these very long straights will um, give anybody with slipstream the benefit. We have a very good run through Puan following car number 17 through and at the last second we're going to move up the inside break slightly later and uh slightly lighter is really the main thing not so much later but we got on the brakes without quite so much pressure allowing us to carry more speed through there and he's going to see that position as we head into or through turns 13 and 14 behind us through 15 and out of 16 we are definitely in the slipstream of the car ahead so we were able to get that move done swiftly enough that we didn't lose connection to him and at the same time the car behind uh lost a bit of time to us through corners 15 and 16 which is perfect. It allows us to take our own line here. Lap four through Puan and a similar situation to what happened on the last lap with car number 17, except this time with car number 22. We get a really good run, closing up behind him, probably about a tenth or two behind him at this point. So Slipstream is absolutely huge for us, really looking for an opportunity to absolutely send it on this guy. I don't want to kill him, but I do want to get around him as quickly as I can. The car ahead of him, I believe that's car number 23 actually, who... You know, we had that accident with on turn or on lap one, so I would it would be very satisfying to get a move done. A strategic off track from car number 22 there, going outside of the track limits and maintaining a higher speed than me, so that actually opens up the gap slightly. Depending on our run here, we could look for a move into the chicane. He takes a bit too much of that curb. It throws his car out to the right. We avoid the curb, just getting in that camber perfectly, but uh, he breaks late enough to keep himself safe and we move back over to the racing line in the middle of the braking zone there's nobody behind us so we can kind of move around in the braking zone as much as we want as long as we can handle it out of the chicane and the gap hasn't really changed much ever since we came out of um corner 16 next lap onto the straight soaking up that slipstream it doesn't look like it's going to be enough to uh put us in the position to attack we are going to move over just to show ourselves on the inside kind of get in his head he actually ends up staying wide a lot wider for a lot longer than i expected so we do send it up the inside uh really didn't want to all this is going to do is um allow car number 17 to get back on us we are now forced to take a defensive line as we went side by side with 22 through that last little series of corners slowing us down and are now under attack However, it's very hard to make a move around, work around the outside of that corner, so we are safe through there. If you do make a move, work around the outside there, it's probably the most satisfying move in the world. Uh, I've done it before, absolutely love it, but on this occasion, the guy behind is not looking for it. Gonna go through Puan once again, car ahead, missing the apex, which is perfect for me. And we have a really, really good run, perhaps looking to replicate the move we put on car number 17, pulling to the outside and then back to the inside at the last second, right before the braking zone, breaking a lot lighter and slightly later than him. And we are going to completely clear him before that corner is done. So we have track position. However, he is really close to us. So we need to have a good couple of turns here through corners uh, 15 and 16 to try and create some separation as the Parabolica does kind of act like a straight and with slipstream, there is a high likelihood that you're able to get a move done into the chicane. We do put, a, honestly, a lot more time between ourselves and the car behind than I was expecting to through corners 15 and 16, and that's going to keep us safe. On lap 6, we are now riding in P16. P15 is way up the road. We're going to tune in to a few cars ahead of him. This is car number 3, car number 4, and car number 2. Car number four's car literally gets nervous and does a little shakedown, uh, putting three onto his ass. The space is very strange there. They almost go three wide. Four ends up off the track. Three makes contact with car number 10. And by the time we come around that corner, we will pick up this position from, I think that's car number four. So now up into P15, and the car ahead has been promoted into P14, which sounds like a pretty damn good position. I think there's 24 drivers in this race. So optimally, we need to be in P12 if we're looking to gain I rating, I think is the situation. By the end of this lap, lap number seven we are starting to soak up 23 slipstream pretty heavily and through the chicane we're going to close that gap up somebody is turned around behind us i take a very wide line thinking that he might reverse across the track he actually does very well to rejoin there, driving forwards what a beautiful
beautiful rejoin that was. Um, rejoining on the side of the track or off of the racing line. You don't see that very often. Coming around turn one of lap eight, we are now sitting in P14, gaining those two free positions over the course of the last lap. Car number 23 is starting to lose the slipstream slightly of the car ahead. We are kind of in the exact same position to him, so he shouldn't really be gaining any time on us. Um, we should honestly both be gaining time to the Alpine car. And for me, the time really isn't going to come from the slipstream, rather it's going to come from the braking zone. As we come to the end of the Kimmel Straight, we gain, oh man, I mean, a lot of time. Braking really late here, car ahead definitely over braking, and I'd say we gained probably three tenths. He then throws his car pretty aggressively through there, which is going to start to heat up his tires, doesn't open up that corner as much as he could. All of this should help us slowly edge closer and closer to him. And by the time we come through the downhill right-hander, he takes a very wide exit. Looks like he does a little bit of adjustment uh, braking-wise mid-corner, and that will put us thoroughly on his tail. So pretty soon here, we need to start looking for a move, or we need to start pushing him down the straights to try and catch the Alpine car. Heading towards the final chicane and lifting once again, just to be cautious. I, there, I've had so many instances there where I get an off track or even a slowdown sometimes. And I can tell you the slowdowns are not worth it ever on Spa. They are absolutely horrible. I think they're actually bugged. 23 getting a bit of oversteer as it seems like he's pretty eager to get the power down out of that corner. To start lap number nine, we are going to be right on his tail and in a perfect, perfectly primed spot to uh, make a move down the straight or at the end of the Kimmel straight at least. So going to try and take advantage of this. We really need to keep it pinned through Eau Rouge and Radion. I have commitment issues here, not going to lie. I need to start like putting my left foot on top of my right foot as I come through Eau Rouge and Radion. In this occasion, you can hear it right there in the middle. I did lift. And I don't think car number 23 did, as he was able to maintain just enough speed and keep that gap going. Uh, I wasn't really able to catch up. I get a little bit of over, not really oversteer, almost really understeer as we enter that corner. And um, through this sector, I mean, the gap's not really going to change. It looked like he was pulling away until he missed that final apex, and that is going to keep me within reach of him. Once again, he's, he opens that corner up a lot. Uh, for people new to driving Spa in the Porsche Cup, I don't think you really gain any advantage from opening that corner up so much. You can dive in pretty early there and treat it as a later second apex, and it works out beautifully. It's uh, it's really just about the trail breaking at that point, as is Puan. I definitely broke slightly too early, but I was more focused on meeting the apex, which I do. I would argue that car 23 went slightly deep there as well, and I know that he's seeing all of this in his rear view. I, I feel like I'm living rent free in his mirrors through corner 13 he's going to once again miss the apex we get that right tire on that curb that helps to pull us around braking a lot earlier than you would think here because again the curb on the left side will pull you around getting the power down he does not open this corner up nearly as wide as he possibly could have and that's going to put us right on his tail but this is where my commitment issues resurface and the ptsd kicks in as i lift through there he takes a much better line through me keeping himself safe at least uh for this first bit of the parabolica perhaps into the chicane though i could look to make something happen and um it's really going to depend on our run right here but before we get any further please remember to hit the like and the bell button for notifications psych i only want your subscription if i can earn it like a man octopus we know the octopus bucket we know the bucket we got to get the octopus into the bucket and if we get the octopus into the bucket you have to subscribe okay Better than the day that I was born, boys. We're to the moon now, we're going to the moon. <laughs> Back to the video, and uh, we lift through here, ultimately completely lose our opportunity into the chicane. Sadly, we lose way too much speed uh, than we need, or way more speed, way, way, we lose a lot more speed than I was expecting to. Run into the back of 23 as he absolutely chucks that thing into the exit of the chicane. Crossing to lap 10, and uh, it's looking like this may be our final battle, as this is the penultimate lap. This is an 11-lap race, so we are running out of time. We need to get a move done. 
through the first corner very nicely. However, both of us have kind of been catching the uh, Alpine car. So down the straight, we're both going to have that slipstream. It won't allow us an opportunity. We get a good entry at the end of the straight. But honestly, he's driving a really solid race at this point, And I am running out of time. Perhaps Puan would be my next move if I could get a uh, good run down towards it into the kind of carousel corner i'm not sure what this one is the double apex at the bottom of the hill he gets a really good exit darting out a lot wider than me something i could probably work on right there is my exit and then i turn in maybe too early they are having to uh build up the throttle lighter than i would like it's going to hold us off until coming into the penultimate chicane so we are about to start the final lap we're pretty far back he takes a narrow entry of course you can do that cutting across the track he ends up locking up his tires and this is going to open up a huge opportunity for us looking for a better exit out of the chicane in first gear we're going to move onto the outside for the final lap and it looks like he still has the track position ahead of us tucking to the inside late and breaking later than him as well gonna try and meet this apex he drives very wide around the outside honestly probably allowing us more space than we really needed and uh fortunately that's going to give us track position heading into Eau Rouge and Radion super important but uh he is in a really really good spot if he keeps this slipstream up he is probably going to at least be able to put an attack onto us at the end of the Kimmel straight and I'm not the greatest at the run up Eau Rouge and Radion I tend to lift and just be safer I'm gonna hold a super defensive line here to try and deter him but he is undeterred moving around the outside we do have track position still we're gonna close out as far as we can kind of pushing him to the left side of the track going side by side with him he gives, allows us space we're allowing him space darting ahead trying to keep track position position he makes slight contact with us and uh it looks like a bit of netco but it's gonna put him backwards actually behind car number two so he loses a position this guy has been fighting his way through the pack he's looking for a move around the outside into the double right hander at the bottom of the hill we hold the inside tight get track position as we get the power down out and heading down into puan we are under some heavy fire from this guy i know this guy is fast he started ahead of us uh and i he kind of came out of nowhere. He was not really on my radar at this point. I was so focused on the car ahead that I forgot about the cars behind. I was really lucky to get around car number 23 when I did because if I hadn't, I would probably be in a fight with car number two behind car number 23. So we both honestly lucky to get around there. He's going to take a wide line. We take a super defensive line into corner 13, but we're able to hug that apex. Coming around corner 14, we uh, go a bit deep, but as he gets onto the power, he slides out off of the track and that actually disqualifies him. So he is out of the race and the pressure is relieved he had too many incident points we now have all of this room behind us to breathe and we only have a couple of corners left in the race we would have to royally fuck something up which we're not gonna do right we're gonna take the chicane perfectly clean we're, we're slowing down for it and coming out of the chicane we are going to put the power down cleanly and remain on the track remain heading towards the line actually crossing the line in p10 as car number two um he actually had a drive through a couple of laps ago so we gained that position and then somebody else had a penalty so we gained that position as well super lucky but i mean honestly that's part of the game at spa is avoiding penalties so up into p10 somehow amazingly up into p10 a very satisfactory recovery drive also a good drive to Owen who finished right behind us. He kind of followed us all the way through the pack there. We did lose a little bit of safety rating, but we gained I rating. They kind of balanced each other out in my mind at least. It was a very satisfying race. Also a very high strength of field race. If you guys enjoyed that video, please check out some of my other ones. If you guys are looking forward to more videos, please check out my channel and subscribe. It would help me so much.